Unhinged lefties are losing it over climate change again. From tantrums to protests and a very strange new sexual orientation, nothing is off limits for these climate cultists, reveals Sky News All-Star Rita Panahi. One of the hosts of The View, Sunny Hostin, lost it this week over none other than the solar eclipse, where she was convinced this astrological event was actually created by climate change. And let's start, lefties, with the ladies of The View and just consider how unhinged, how divorced from reality you would have to be when even Joy Behar and Whoopi Goldberg have to step in to correct your climate scaremongering. Here is the dangerously dim Sunny Hostin connecting an earthquake, cicadas and the eclipse. Apparently it's all because of global warming. We've got a solar eclipse. Uh, we've got an earthquake. Down the she ran down the hallway. <laughs> the rapture is here. The rapture's here. And then also, I learned that the cicadas are coming. Cicadas. Cicadas. Although I love for the, the first time in cicada. like no, 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 two That's, different. No, two, no, well, they, this is what I read. Two, two different there's times. There's two different kinds of cicadas. Yes, two different coming. times. Times are coming. The good cicadas but, right, and the bad. But no. for the first time in in many many years. No, and seven. So, every 17 years this happens. Well, that's not what I read, but maybe. You know, maybe well, you know better. I, but in I will a way, say all those all those things together would maybe lead one to believe that you know either climate change exists, that's or, more or something point. is really or something going on. returning. Earthquakes are not at the mercy of climate change. It's underground. No. It can't. It, 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 it happens. And the, and and the eclipse. They've known about the eclipse coming because eclipses happen when Joy and Whoopi have to step in. That's how bad she's going. Now, staying on the eclipse. And despite being a UN climate advisor, this lefty didn't hold back when she declared the climate crisis is the fault of the white man. UN climate advisor Aisha Siddiqui, who has taken a momentary break from tweeting pro-Palestinian talking points to spew this utter racist garbage. The climate crisis is man-made. <laughs> and it's not just man-made, it's white man. <laughs> Yes, it's white men causing all the environmental damage. Just ignore the fact that there are a number of Asian countries dumping their rubbish, tons of the stuff, directly into waterways. Uh, it's the white men and their capitalism we need to worry about. And pray tell Aisha, how do we save the planet? The way that we save our planet is when we protect the most vulnerable communities among us. And this includes black trans women. Black trans women, of course. That's the answer to everything, always. Now to more examples. A BBC journalist was humbled in a major way when the president of Guyana hit back and gave him a reality check about climate change. You watch as this climate change crazy BBC journalist is fact-checked and humbled by Dr. Irfan Ali, the president of Guyana. Let's start with the BBC introduction. You know straight away what his angle's gonna be. Welcome to Hard Talk, I'm Stephen Sacker, and today I am in Guyana, South America, a country of some 800,000 people, which right now can claim to have the fastest growing economy in the world. The reason oil, vast reserves of the stuff located offshore. My guest today is Guyana's president, Irfan Ali. His country's newfound oil riches have stoked tensions with neighboring Venezuela. They've also raised questions about this country's vulnerability to climate change. So is oil really a blessing or a curse? Spoiler, it's a blessing. Yes, it is. It's a blessing. The oil is always a blessing. Now let the humbling begin. Take it away, Dr. Ali. Let's take a big picture look at what's going on here. Over the next um, decade, two decades, it is uh, expected that there will be $150 billion worth of oil and gas extracted off your coast. It's an extraordinary figure. But 
Think of it in practical terms. That means, according to many experts, more than two billion tonnes of carbon emissions will come from your seabed, from those reserves, and be released into the atmosphere. I, I don't know if you as a head of state went to the COP Let in Dubai. Let me stop you right there. Let me stop you right there. Do you know that Guyana has a forest forever that is the size of England and Scotland combined? A forest that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon? A forest that we have kept alive? A forest that we have kept alive? Does that give you the right? No, Does no, that no, no, give no, you I, the that, right that, to release that, that all of this right. carbon? Fancy berating the leader of a country with the fastest growing economy in the world. The arrogance, the smug, sanctimonious arrogance of the BBC. Why shouldn't a relatively poor South American nation enrich itself and its citizens via fossil fuels, just like every other advanced economy in the world has done? Now watch as the president of Guyana gives our lefty losing it a lesson in the importance of preservation. From that give you the right to, to lecture us on climate change, I am going to lecture you on climate change because we have kept this forest alive that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon that you enjoy, that the world enjoy, that you don't pay us for, that you don't value, that you don't see a value in, that the people of Guyana has kept alive. Guess what? We have the lowest deforestation rate in the world. A new sexual movement is emerging in the UK where people are now in relationships with nature. Now to the UK, where a new sexuality has just dropped. Forget about being, I don't know, heterosexual, bisexual, homosexual, even pansexual. That's all passe. We are now in the era of the ecosexual. Kind of, I'd say more ecosexual. What is an ecosexual? Who finds nature sexy? Huh. <laughs> This is a growing movement that treats nature as a sensual partner. And over 100,000 people now identify as ecosexual worldwide. How a person expresses their ecosexuality ranges widely. That was on Channel 4, in case you were wondering who is trying to normalise lefties losing it. Two eco-loving nature warriors lost it at Glasgow Museum, defacing a bust of Queen Victoria in the name of climate activism. Now let's go to two unhinged lefty women losing it at Glasgow Museum and doing this to a bust of Queen Victoria. Just brave and stunning work there from the climate catastrophists who do nothing but spew crazy lies and try to destroy beautiful things. That was porridge and jam, by the way, they poured over the statue. And even Australia has lefties losing it over government climate policy. Now to Melbourne, Australia's lefty losing it capital, where they were again blocking roads, causing mayhem in the CBD. And this short video was proudly posted by a Greens politician who was there, Samantha Ratnam. Does Albanese represent us? No! Does Penny Wong represent us? No! Hey, your party is in an unofficial alliance with a Labor, if you don't like their policies, I don't know, withdraw your support, but I doubt that's going to be happening anytime soon. And this climate expert couldn't even explain what carbon dioxide actually is when questioned in the US Senate. Now to a Democrat expert witness who, despite having superb hair, is humiliated over and over again by the superb Louisiana Senator, John Kennedy. This is art, folks. This is art. I mean, you're here as an expert. Tell me more about what carbon dioxide is. I'm here as an expert cross-country skier who sees the changes in my winters and the landscape that I live in in Alaska. 
And so carbon dioxide is, what I see it as is, you know, it's a gas that exists in our atmosphere. And what, is it the major part of our atmosphere? Or? It's a huge part of our atmosphere, yeah. It's actually a very small part of our atmosphere. Well, okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. What are you asking specifically? Uh, well, you said we need to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. I'd like to know first if you know what it is. Uh, it only gets better. Let's watch. Uh, how, how much will it cost for us to uh, become carbon neutral in the United States by 2050? I'm not a professional on that. I don't have an answer. You don't have any idea? No. You, you just think we ought to spend the money? I'm not an economist. Yeah, but it's going to cost money. You realize that? Yeah, but we've also talked about the, the trade-off of what the cost of climate change as emergencies will cost in the future also. So. Right, but it's going to cost trillions of dollars to become carbon neutral by 20,050, right? I do not know. You don't know. You just think we ought to do it. I I don't have a great answer for you, but I think okay. I would... If we, spent, if we spent those trillions of dollars and became carbon neutral by 2050 in the United States, um, which you advocate, how much will it reduce world temperatures? I don't have an answer for that. You don't know? No. You just think we ought to spend the money and then see what happens? I think as an athlete, I think if we spend that money and invest in our future, hopefully those temperatures stop rising and maybe the snow at least stabilizes where it is for me. There you go, the indulged and spectacularly clueless Greta Thunberg generation just spent trillions without really knowing why, make bold statements without any idea of the facts and uh, turn up as an expert witness when you clearly have zero idea. And the ultimate lefty environmentalist fashion brand, The North Face, has lost it, incentivizing customers to complete a survey saying the outdoors can be racist. Let's start with North Face. You know, the makers of those overpriced, low-quality garments favoured by Dan Andrews and other fashion backward souls. Well, in the US and elsewhere, North Face are offering 20% off if you complete their digital course in racial inclusion. Customers are taught how white privilege grants access to the outdoors and why the outdoors can be racist. Systemic action is around the long-term vision of making the outdoors more accessible for everyone, including people of colour. It's so beautiful because it's just it's just breaking all the norms and barriers and everything and it's showing you can do anything with hijab, without hijab. Going outdoors and being black outdoors and being physically black and being like, this is stuff that we do do, like almost changing the perception or makeup of what a climber looks like. And finally, a climate cultist has been given a taste of his own medicine when he was thrown across the room by a security guard after trying to harass a US senator. Let's watch this climate cultist abuse Senator Joe Manchin and then watch as he goes flying. Joe Manchin, you have sold our futures and you've gotten rich doing it. You sick oh, How dare you? You have sold our futures. How dare you? You have sold our futures. 